Hi fam bam, welcome back. It is Simplify Saturday, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you more overlooked areas of excess. You guys seem to really love the video, and you said it was super helpful. Some of you guys brought up some really good areas that I had missed, and it got my wheels turning, and I thought, I have more to share. So I hope you guys like this video and find it equally as valuable. If you do, let me know in the comments below, as well as give this video a thumbs up. So the first area of excess that I have for you is lip products and makeup. I'm gonna have to say thank you to Cassandra Bankinson for pointing this out, because I thought, you know, I talked about body care, but, and makeup is pretty obvious, but when you talk specifically about lip products, I am so guilty of this. I have chapstick in every corner you can think of. There's lip gloss everywhere, and I think it's very common to overlook this area because it seems really useful to have around. Number two is office supplies. This is thanks to another commenter, and this one I feel like is tough to look at as an area of excess because certain things seem so helpful. Like we need paper clips around, and once in a while we might need to use whiteout, right? And maybe like scotch tape versus packaging tape, all these things tend to build up and seem useful, but they just sit there in storage and we only use them once in a while. The third thing on my list is wires, chargers, and cables. We actually use these things regularly and find them useful, but the wires, chargers, and cables seem to outlast its companion product, like a phone or a computer, and when we replace these products, we get a new set of wires, chargers, and cables, and we keep them just in case. Over time, this can really build up in its own little stash, and it's easy to overlook and question whether or not we need to give them away. Number four is home improvement or home repair items. Sometimes we wanna fill a wall and we buy some spackle or we wanna buy some nails to hang one or two picture frames up and then we have a bunch of this extra home hardware and stuff laying around. Like we could have a mini Home Depot or like a mini renovation going on, but it's just kind of sitting there, a half can of paint, some extra paint brushes and rollers, and we don't really know when we're actually going to use them again. Number five on my list are to-go items. This is like napkins, chopsticks, or like extra sauce packets from the restaurants, or like stuff that you might take home or they throw in the bag when you order a take home or take out order. And you want to keep them because you don't want to waste them, and you think they might be good for your car to just like stuff in the back drawer of your kitchen, but then they just end up sitting there and not really getting used. So what we try to do is we try to tell them we don't need any extra utensils or napkins, and if we do, we stick a little in our car, but keep in mind that we have it in our car so that we don't re replace them excessively or collect too many of those items. The next thing on my list is extra notepads and notebooks. A lot of these things come for free. I don't even know who's sending it to us, but you know the ones that come in the mail and they have your name and address and they have like all these notebooks and stickers that they send to you complimentary. Well, of course we don't want those to go to waste. That's like paper and trees, but then they just end up stacking up in the corner of the office somewhere and never really getting used. Number seven on my list are blankets, sheets, and towels. Most of us have a whole cabinet or closet dedicated to extra blankets, sheets, and towels. And it's easy to do because they're very useful, but if we get extra or we replace them, we don't wanna get rid of the old ones for some reason. What I like to do to approach this is I like to take what I need for my own household and double that so that when I wash everything, I can replace it right away. Then I carry enough extra to accommodate guests at its maximum capacity in my house. Then everything else goes. Places like animal rescue, foster homes, and orphanages will take excess blankets and towels and they can really use them. The next thing on my list are storage units. This comes in the form of boxes, baskets, shelving, and also little pieces of furniture like drawers and dressers that we can attach to and cling on to and not want to get rid of because of course they seem useful and they store a bunch of stuff. The thing is when you have more storage units, you have more of a tendency to store more stuff and it's out of sight, out of mind. So it becomes an extra thing to clean up and maintain. Number nine is extra plants. This is really easy to do if you like having plants in your house, you're gifted plants or you're dealing with a sick plant that might be dying and you're trying to put it outside to rehabilitate it. But now you have this empty vase. So most of us have the tendency to go to the store and buy something new to fill that 
plant-based, but we have a bunch of sick, semi-half-dying plants stacked outside that we're hoping will revive so that we can figure out where to put it eventually. This is probably the number one reason I don't buy any orchids, because I love them, but they only bloom like twice a year, and then the rest of the time they're in this dormant state. So it's really easy to want to collect a bunch, so you always have a bloomed orchid around, but then you have all these things to take care of in store. Which brings me to number 10 on my list, which is extra pots and planters. A lot of times a plant will get sick and die and we don't want to throw away the pot. Why not? You know, it's useful. But when you buy a new plant, it tends to come with its own pot or it might not fit some of your old pots. So you have to get it its own unique pot anyways. Number 11 would be baking supplies. This comes in the form of the special pans that you need for the muffin or the bread, papers, special ingredients like food coloring, cornstarch, or like powdered sugar that you're never gonna use or rarely ever use except for this one unique time that you wanted to bake. Number 12 is dog care. Like with anything that you care about, you want to go above and beyond to make sure you have everything necessary to care for it fully and really well. But for us, we had things like nail clippers and doggy shampoo and a special hairbrush that we never use because it's much simpler than that. So typically what I like to say is try to go at the minimum and then if you feel like you need something, acquire something that will allow you to give it a try and really see if it's useful or adds value to you. After that on my list is packaging and cardboard. I don't know about you, but I tend not to like cardboard to go to waste. I want to reuse my boxes. I work in commercial where I get tons of packaging, so we have this excess of cardboard. And fortunately, my husband is very creative with the kids and they do a lot of artwork with it. And we have cardboard recycling here, but it still feels like so much goes to waste. There comes a time where I have to say, okay, I gotta let this go because I'm never gonna ship out this many packages or use these boxes for who knows what. Number 14, as you saw on my decluttering my kitchen video, is old jars, containers, food storage, glasses for candles, the things that are typically meant to be recycled and thrown away, but has a multi-use or a secondary use option. I tend to hoard these things. I don't like having to throw them away and put them through the trash or recycling process if unnecessary. But a lot of times you can end up stacking so many of these items that you become a garbage collector and <laughs> you end up not using them. So keep what you're actually gonna use. And I think it's really great to think forward in that sense. Like this is a jar, it's a glass jar. Can I put something in it? Like my nuts, seeds, herbs, etc. Is there a way I can use this as storage? And to reuse it and repurpose it is great. But also keep in mind that if you or hoarding all these things without a specific purpose, then it becomes excessive. Last on my list are for sale items. You know who you are when you're at the store and you're like, wow, this is for sale. This is useful and you take it home, then you put it in that special cabinet or that special storage place where you know you're gonna use it someday and it sits there for months, sometimes years. If you have that cabinet, I encourage you to go into it right now, look at what you're storing, Ask yourself how long you've been storing it, can you see yourself using it, and why you haven't used it up till this point. If it's simply because you forgot, place it somewhere where you can see. I have an emergency kit and I like to store excess stuff just in case there's an emergency like another hurricane or the electricity goes out. But I have a special closet that I go into regularly to use this stuff. So when we run out of toothpaste, I go into that closet and the very first one with the first expiration date comes out and I buy a new one to replace and put in the back of that shelf. So that way I'm always aware of what is there and it's being used and cycled out. So that is another list of 15 overlooked areas of excess if I missed anything stick it in the comments below because I want to know and I hope this helps you guys in being aware and finding a way to simplify your external environment I appreciate you guys so much and I'm super appreciative for those of you who are in the move program right now I have to be honest it is kicking my butt but I'm enjoying it and I'm loving it and I can feel the change in my own body I'm already like in motion all the time but to have this very intentional scheduled time during this challenge has absolutely absolutely been phenomenal and I hope you guys are enjoying it if you're part of it too. So that is it for today. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your weekend. Remember to be good, be great, be grateful, and I'll see you back here Monday for more simplification and minimalism. I almost forgot to tell you guys, Super Saturday giveaway bonus ends today. So if you haven't signed up, go ahead and do that before it ends and then keep an eye out on your emails for the announcement for who the winner is. Thank you guys so much for participating and I'll see you next time.